Hey guys, Road and Stag here, and welcome to an Ice and Fire Total War Blackfire Rebellion beta mod preview. Bit of a mouthful. So, uh, for those who are wondering what the hell this mod is, it's obviously set in the Ice and Fire universe and is set during the time, during the events of the Blackfire Rebellion, which happened in 195AL. And yeah. Now, this is a bit of a beta, uh, a beta really of the entire of Ice and Fire Total War. Um, because. Uh, it's, it hasn't really released a proper full version, so it's just it's simply just a beta and the preview of what's to come. Um, so, let's go for the factions. So, of course, you have House Baratheon. Now, this isn't done yet. Um, again, this is a beta, but for a beta, it's still very good. But anyway, so House Baratheon, House Greyjoy in the Iron Islands, House Targaryen in the Crownlands, and House Blackfire during the Rebellion, of course. Of their, each of the, All of them have their own custom descriptions as well. And strength and weaknesses, etc. House Aaron, House Lannister, House Tully, House Tyrell, and House Martell as well. And along along with uh, House Rain, uh, who are currently fighting against the Lannisters, or well, you can join the Lannisters or what? But it's very cool. I've just seen him in it. Um, House Hightower, uh, House Yulmwood, uh, the Free City of Bravos. And House Frey. I'll go for the three cities because the three cities aren't meant to be playable. But I'll go for that later on anyway. But anyway, let's go have a look at the units. Now I will add before we go straight into the units. Now this the units um, are for every faction that has been put into the mod. Now you may notice these this is for factions that aren't in this current version of the mod. Uh, but these are factions that will be implemented at a later date. And with future versions as they go forward. So you can expect Dream of Spring and Clash of Kings to have a uh, nation like House Baratheon Renny's Coalition. Or Feast of Crows, or uh, to have the Lords Declarant as their own faction. But we will go through this now. Uh, custom battles are available. The units, some units aren't completely skinned, but a lot of, uh, most of them are. So that's that's quite good. Um, let's go for the Starks. So the Starks are basic uh, winter troops and swordsmen. Very nice units there. Uh, winter cavalry as well. Uh, Stark bodyguard, which doesn't have a unit card yet, uh, mainly because they're still working on it. That's up. It's my rule will say it is a beta. Remember, uh, Randy doesn't have a proper roster yet, but that's that. And then move over to House Baratheon slash Lannister. Obviously, this faction is not in the mod, but uh, the units and I like I like that they have the factions that are in the custom battles, so you can have custom battles, which is cool. Uh, crosswomen, uh, spearmen, your basic Westland troops, and then the Targaryens uh, who have dragon swordsmen. And Targaryen Bodyguard as well. And they have their Gold Cloaks as well, which is its own unit, which is awesome. And along with the Cavalry and etc. Now House Baratheon, uh, which has Chosen Pikemen, Chosen Swordsmen. You can uh, you can see the Stannis, uh, the Stannis banner on there as well. That's pretty cool. And the Cavalry and uh, Stormman Bodyguard. So yeah, very nice set. House Blackfire. Which has a similar roster to the Targaryens, apart from they don't have the Golden Company Knights. Well, the Targaryens don't have the Golden Company Knights, but these guys do. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, House Greyjoy as well. So a lot of Reaver troops there. Uh, Reaver Cavalry as well, that's cool to see. Nice to see the Ironborn have Cavalry. Uh, Drown Men as well. Sunset Sea Raiders. Uh, Ironborn Men at Arms. And the Greyjoy Bodyguard, which is a, uh, I believe, a Cavalry unit. Maybe, I think. <laughs> Actually, I think it might no, it might be an infantry unit. I'm not entirely sure there, but I demand so. The Arons, who have Falcon Swordsmen, uh, Falcon Lancers, Veilmen at Arms, and with these guys, Veil Bodyguard, yeah. So very nice units there. Now you will notice that some of these uh, units are similar to other Game of Thrones mods, like Age of Petty Kings. They use Age of Petty Kings as a base for this mod. I do quite know quite a bit of information about this mod, actually, because I've um, been in the uh, Discord for like, a couple of years now. And um, yeah, it's very good. So uh, that's the Lannister troops, very a bit similar to the Joffrey Lannister uh, faction, but um, still cool. Um, House Bolton as well. Uh, Dread Swordsmen, I like the look of them very much. Uh, Dread Cavalry and some Stark troops as well, or Bolton Bodyguard as well. Uh, moving over to House Tully, uh, they have a nice little Riverland roster. Trident Swordsmen and Bodyguards, uh, Men at Arms and Spearmen. And some good bowmen and cavalry, of course. Uh, and then moving over to the Lords Declarant, which is a bit similar to the Aaron, Aaron roster, but it's a bit, a bit small. I'm sure it will be up there. Once uh, the mod is uh, 
that has some more periods like Clash of Kings and etc. There'll be more fleshed out rosters for each faction. But yeah, that's the Lords of Claret. I like the fact that they're a faction, by the way. <laughs> How's uh, Tyrell? Road Swordsman, Rose Lancers. Uh, you got um, Shield Irons Levy, that's kind of cool. And uh, Shield Wardens as well, which is pretty cool. A hybrid unit, which is pretty cool. And yeah, that's them. I move over to House Rain. Uh, Westland troops again, but they got Golden Coast Swordsmen, which look awesome. And Rain Bodyguard and Knights of the Golden Coast, which I like the look of them straight away. Uh, House Martel, which has I like this roster very much. Uh, Prince's Swordsman, uh, Spearman, uh, Bowman, and Prince's Cavalry, very nice. Uh, Dawn Spearman as well. Royal Pikes, that's pretty cool. Royal Infantry. And yeah, some Royal Lancers as well. Uh, House Hightower, a bit of a similar roster, except the Hightower units are different. So they have like South March Men at Arms, uh, South March Knights, and uh, so on. But yeah, very nice unit. And they got the Shield Wardens as well. Now for the final units. For House Jormont, they have the same Dawnish traits, but different. Uh, different variations. So Bowmay Swordsman, that's the new unit for the uh, Yormud faction. Uh, Bowmay Archers, which look pretty cool. And you got Bowmay Bodyguard as well, along with Bowmay Knights, that's cool. Now the Free City of Lease, uh, you will notice that the Free Cities aren't completely polished and they're not really meant to be playable, however you can go into the cat distract file and just put them in the playable section. You can do that, but I would recommend them because they're not really meant to be playable, it's meant to be focused on Westeros, but Essos um, Western Coast of Essos is part of this, and I'll show you that when we get into the campaign. But the Free City of Lees. Now, the Free City factions have the same roster. So, Reavers, Sellsword Pikemen, Free Company, Merchants, Sellsword Crossmen, Free Company Lancers, and Free Riders. Now, you, along with Mercenaries as well, which I'll show you at, and when we get into the mod. So, that's the Free City of Bravos. Now, the others will be a faction, however, for now, they've just got the, uh, two units, which is just meant to be not be really be playable, so I can ignore that. Uh, Magistrate Amir, or Mer, or whatever you pronounce that place, <laughs> I don't know, uh, same roster. And the Fave Militant, I know, is have the Night's Watch roster, which uh, I don't know if that's meant to be, I'd, I'd assume it's uh, meant to be just um, the Fave Militant, or uh, they have a uh, hybrid for the Night's Watch as well, or they just change it around, but uh, you'll see. Um, Magistrate of Panto is similar, and the Admin Faction. Now, the Admin Faction is meant to be like the Wildling Faction, um, but it's basically for a hot seat, it's called Admin Faction. So the Admin can have a part to play in the um, hot seat and can like spawn in troops and make Wildling invasions and all that sort, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, but for just uh, purposes here, just called the Wildlings. I'm pretty sure they will rename them to the Wildlings as time goes on. But yeah, for the Wildlings, they have. Spearmen, they do have some Ice River Cannibals, uh, Fen Spearmen, uh, Hornfoot Men. Uh, they do have some Outlaws and Cavalry, which I, I don't know if that's meant to be there, but there you go, that's the Mercenaries anyway. Uh, Fen Axemen, uh, Wildling Archers. You see the Archers and Wildling Troops have a lot more uh, troop count than any of the other nations, uh, um, any units in the other factions. And uh, similar, similar reminds me of Mordor, really, from uh, Third Age. And then, of course, they've got Mammoths as well, which is pretty cool. But anyway, let's go get straight and right into the campaign. And here we are with one of the most beautiful looking maps uh, you will see in any Westeros mod I've ever found. Uh, we go through the family trees. Now, each faction will have their own family tree or the unique unique family tree. So obviously, Damon Blackfire, they will have their own retinues and traits as well. He's just got Crown and Blackfire. And obviously, he has his family as well, along with Aegor Pitterstill. Awesome person. I uh, love Pitterstill. <laughs> obviously married into the family tree so you have the bit still line along with the black five which i think is cool um anyway let's get into the faction obviously this is what you can build in your settlement so stables and but in westeros everything is usually built for you because in this time period that's just the way it is <laughs> and um that's what units you can get as well uh, those these take three turns two turns two turns three turns. i'm not sure how many, sure how many years it is per uh, how many turns it is per year but I think it's four or six. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, you can find out uh, when you do some testing yourselves. When you ever you play the mod. I do obviously recommend this mod. It is fantastic. So let's begin with the beginning of the map. Now this doesn't encounter the north. The reason it doesn't like um, have the whole north is because I don't think they finished the north when they uh, sent uh, did this uh, mod. But uh, the north, um, for the Blackfire Ben, the Starks did nothing. They weren't interested. <laughs> 
And the same with the wildlings and all that. You know, they never came into the Black Forest, but they Starks were just completely neutral. Um, and the, so that's why the North isn't here, and because they probably didn't finish it in time. Um, but yeah, obviously you can take Greywater Watch, but it's just really boundary, really, for any other place. Now, if I do take Toggle Foe off, it's just a Black Fock of War. So you're not really meant to be up here, really, but uh, you can if you want, but it's, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, there's a reason there's a black thing there. And the black thing in the in the single player game with the AI, the AI never goes towards the black stuff. Um, which is just a weird coding thing, I think. But anyway, let's begin at the top of the map. So, you have the three sisters. Long sister, Sisseton, and little sister. Which are under the house fray, which I find a little interesting. I think it's just to uh, balance out the phrase. Um, because obviously they should really be part of the Arons, the Aron faction, the Veil. Not really part of the uh, of the twin of the phrase, but it's probably for ba balancing reasons. I'd assume. Um, I am noticing there is quite a few uh, music, um, uh, familiar music we've seen from other places like uh, Harry Potter at the moment. I can hear that, and <laughs> so there's quite a few different, a uh, lot of different music and stuff, which is cool to listen to. Um, I've just got the Cape of Eagles over here. And so you've got Vibrant Keep, uh, Erin Ford, and Seaguard as well. Now, quite a few of these settlements will have custom models. So you have the Twins, which, funny enough, is two settlements with the... with called The and Twin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't know why I did that. But it's probably easier than uh, splitting them into two factions. Uh, two settlements, sorry. But I do like that. That's cool. <laughs> I think they could have done with calling it the Twins West, or Twins West and Twins East, instead of just The and twins. <laughs> it's a little odd. But uh, there you go. Uh, I've just got Sweet Willow. Old Stones as well is sort of, I think it's a ruined settlement model. It's not meant, it's not an actual model, but uh, I kind of like that. It's cool. Um, yeah, obviously the rivers are massive. You can sail down these rivers. I can't really find you a boat to show an example, but there you go. But as you can see, there's, there's the trading ships going through. Seaguard as well. Uh, moving down to the Misty Isle, which I believe is a place you read it in the book so I can't remember what chapter it was but uh, what book it was but <laughs> I remember reading it something about the Misty Isle um I think <laughs> it's been about a couple months since I read the book so yeah uh River Run has its own little model as well I do like that it's similar to Age of Petty Kings the Ice and Fire mod where it's got like the Tully banner and a similar fortress model but that's pretty cool um so Willow Woods uh, Wayfarer will rest uh, Wayfarer's rest sorry <laughs> And then we've got Stonehenge over here, Raven Tree Hall. I do love how spaced out everything is. It's it's really nice and it makes it so... It just, it's just really nice. I, I love this mod. It's fantastic. Uh, got Harren Hall has its own custom model. I think that's fantastic. They are working on a model, I believe... Oh, you, oh that's quite I completely forgot about. Ferry. You can recruit ferries and uh, essentially uh, take an army out here, put them on a the ferry and sell them over to like... You can go anywhere. Sail them over here to land by Terek. Sail, sail them over to White Walls to reinforce it. Uh, sail it all the way over down here to Blackfire Keep. Uh, this is blocked off the King's Landing, which is to stop you get on the boat and get an army and just go to, going down the river and taking King's Landing like uh, it's nothing. So that's why that's there. But anyway, back to Harren Hall. Now they are working on a model that will. Uh, I think they're doing the model which is ruined Harren Hall, and when you restore Harren Hall. Similar to a Numenas, I think, from a uh, Divide and Conquer. When you restore that, it, the model changes. So I think that's what they're working on. Now, I'm not 100% sure if the models are like this in the battle map. I haven't done that much testing of the model, I'm afraid. But I'm pretty sure. I don't know if it is. I don't, I'm not 100% sure. So I will let you um, look look into that yourselves. Uh, Darren Saltpans. I'm pretty sure it's a custom model. I'd be, uh, be disappointed if it isn't. But then. Um, if not, I'm sure they'll add it at some point. Uh, the Veil as well, which is massive, and you can only get... Hang on, no, never mind. You can only get through the Veil. Um, you have to take the bloody gate to get through the Veil. You can go up through here, which I'm pretty sure... No, you can't get through there. You can. <laughs> it's a bit of a maze of Veil. But yeah, you can actually uh, go up through this way and sneak into the Veil through this way. <laughs> so that's another way to get in. But uh, if you want to get to the Eerie, you have to take the bloody gate to the moon. And if you want to get to the bloody gate, well, you need to get into the veil properly to get the bloody gate. But it's cool they have those little models there. And I like the uh, model for them as well. Um, not models. <laughs> it's cool they have the settlements there. Well, the gate to the moon is an actual settlement rather than just being a fort or something like that. But I like that. Now, the Eerie has a fantastic model. I love the look of this. It is fantastic. 
This is the most mod is just spawn, uh, probably in my opinion the best Game of Thrones mod there is. Um, but I'm sure I'll go into that later on. But uh, yeah, it's fantastic. The area up there is awesome. Uh, the Vale up here, massive. Pebbles is a settlement which is cool. Castle Moor, Cold Water Burn, Snake Woods, and the Fingers up here. Uh, Longbow Hall, Nine Stars, Old Anchor, Iron Oaks, the Vale was. This map and Vale was just huge. <laughs> it's fantastic. Oh, it's amazing. Uh, Runestone as well, which has got this nice little iron bit around it, which is fantastic. And Golden. I've said fantastic a hell of a lot in this video. <laughs> but it just really is amazing. Uh, Witch Isle. And then you have down here Cracklaw Point, Claw Isle, uh, Diaden, which is awesome. Brown Hollow as well, that's the top of that. With Maiden Pool and all that as well. Uh, White Walls is uh, two. Uh, let's move over down a little bit further into the Riverland. So, Utranta, which is a nice little. Someone here, which I like. I keep sometimes listening out for music that I think I can hear. But I think it's just Game of Thrones music and uh, I think uh, apparently Harry Potter for some reason. But, yeah. <laughs> but remember, this is a beta, so things will are definitely subject to change very soon. Uh, Stony Sept, uh, Pink Maiden, and yeah, I've just been through that bit. So we go into the Wester Land. So the northern bit, got Windhall, uh, Banefall. Oh, I forgot about the Iron Islands. Now, the Iron Islands is massive. I <laughs> love the, how big this is, which is awesome to see. Uh, Lonely Light as well, which I could they could do with like, moving it further inland, but I can't like it being on the edge. It's not bad. Uh, you can see the thing isn't meant to be things. It's like purple bits. So ignore that. Ignore that. Just completely ignore that. <laughs> Black Tide, Awkward, uh, Drum, Hammerhorn, Saltcliffe, Lordsport Pike as well. With his own custom model. I will remember that the all the characters and generals and stuff have their own little models as well which is great uh, obviously it's faction models it's faction wide models not just uh, for one individual uh, each individual general I still think that's awesome though uh, Lord Sport as well and you got Saltcliff and Ten Towers this iron the space out so good I love that <laughs> really I'm in love with this one uh, Windhall Banefort the Crag and then you got Castamere with his own little model as well absolutely fantastic um I am in love <laughs> Golden Tooth as well, which uh, for a minute, you back in, if I remember correctly, um, Golden Tooth was a gateway to the west, so you could only get in through, uh, I think it was a different mod or different older version of the mods of the Dream of Spring and Ice and Fire mods, because I've had the older versions to look at. Um, Golden Tooth is usually block off the uh, west, but uh, in this, it's just, you can go through. <laughs> and you do have like a goat path that goes around and into the west, which is kind of cool. I think it's something that Rob Stark did in the World of Five Kings. Um, yeah, Castamere, Tarbeck Hall, which is awesome. And then down here, you have Castle Rock and Lannisport, with the, each with their own little settlement model, which is awesome. I do love the model for this. It just feels so immersive and just, it feels right. <laughs> Fair Castle and Case and Feast Fires as well. Now, we'll go for the diplomacy, actually. I will do this. So, Blackfires have the Reigns, the Yulmuds, ignore that bit. <laughs> Yulmuds and the Freys against the Targaryens, Arons, Lannisters, and Tullys and Martells. Of course, alliances will change over and over. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. Anyway, that's the West down here. Great call, Cornfield, Peckledon, and Silverhill. Nice little river bit here. I like that. And uh, died in the mapping. The map and the map for this is just great. They've done so much work into this map. I think it's great. Brilliant. Um. Let's go into the Crown Lands. Actually, go to Dragonstone first. So, we've got Driftmark here, which uh, nice little <laughs> spaced out. I like that very much. And Dragonstone as well, with its own custom model uh, and its own like little island, which isn't because remember Dragonstone in previous uh, Westeros Turtle War versions, it used to be just like a little island and just a Dragonstone on top. But it's actually gone out of it. This mod team has gone out of its way to make it Dragonstone its own little area, which I really like. And the model for that is great. Uh, Sweet Point Sound as well is down here. Sharp Point, which is cool, along with Stone Dance. I'll go over the three cities and all that in a minute. Uh, this little island here. <laughs> Got Duskendale here, which, is look, which looks awesome. Uh, Stokeworth, and then moving down uh, past Hayford to King's Landing with its own custom model. You can see the Sceptre Baelor there, and you can see the Dragon Pit as well. Uh, I think that's like a little fishing bit outside the city, which is cool. <laughs> And uh, Red Keep as well, which looks fantastic. Uh, amazing. And of course, Brendan Rivers down outside. What a badass general. 
So yeah. Uh, quite a few of the music is from the Petty King's mod as well. Uh, some of it's have changed, some of it's they haven't. Um, but uh, yeah. And this is a King's mod as well. It's got its own little salmon, the Water, which is cool to see. And then you've got Tumbleton, and then you got Blackfire Keep, which we saw earlier, which has its own custom model, which looks fantastic. I do love the look of this. I think it's just me, but it's giving me a uh, Kara Moran vibes from The Witcher. <laughs> which uh, might be, might be that, I don't know. <laughs> it might be, it might be, I don't think it's the same model. I think it's like, I swear I've seen it like, used the Dreadfort a long time ago. But yeah, quite a few models have, uh, most of them have been made and some have been reused from other West Rose mods, but I feel, still think it's fantastic. I will note there is a Discord in the description for the Ice and Fire Turtle War Discord. That doesn't make any sense. The Ice and Fire Turtle War Discord is in the description for those who want to check out the uh, mod page and just check out, well, not the mod page, but check out previews for the. Uh, for what's to come and um, there's still so much to come uh, and all the summers down here north part of the ridge you got cold moat here which is nice little yeah uh, inside the mountain bit which is cool stand fast here and stack house you got more of the reach over here castle bridges uh red lake old oak and you got the uh, shield islands which is sort of like spread out into two settlements which is cool to see uh gray shield and lord hewitt's town and then over here, down to Appleton, you have Cider Hill, Cider Hill, uh, Cider Hall, sorry, and Ashford, Smithington, and all this in the Reach. And then moving over to High Garden with its own custom model and a little like mountain bit, which I kind of like. Um, very nice set. That's High Garden, beautiful model, and looks so much like the books. I absolutely, High Garden is fantastic. <laughs> it's just everything about this mod just makes me f fucking happy. It's <laughs> just so good. Uh, you have Star Pike, which is home to House Peak, and The Witcher is uh, home as well. Apparently, he, he apparently The Witcher's moved to Game of Thrones. Apparently, but yeah, that's yeah, uh, but yeah, they use quite a few um, portraits from The Witcher as well, which is I think is great. I'm not saying that when they use models over from different uh, different genres of universes is bad. I think it just makes it look quite nice. Sometimes it's it just it can also act as a nice little Easter egg as well. Uh, but that's Star Pike, and you got Horn Hill, home to the Tarleys. Uh, Dunsonbury, Dunsonbury, and then you got Brightwater Keep, which I like the look of that, and that is great. Band Bandolin, uh, I was gonna say Bandoline, but it's Bandolin, Black Crown, and you got Honey Holt. The moon down here, you have Uplands, which looks awesome. I'll go for Dawn in a moment. Uh, Hol um, Holy Hall, Holy Hall, okay, Holy Hall, I think, not Holy Hall. Uh, Three Towers. It's great, and then you got Rhymes Port as well, which looks awesome. I love the way they've done the arbor, um, and it's got some little. Um, they basically put um, like resources, um, yeah, resources on the, onto the map just to spice it up a bit, which I like. I like its own little uh, vine field over here with all the wine making stuff, and uh, Rhymes Port. And I love all the trade as well. That's awesome. Uh, the trade as well, which has been upgraded. I think every faction starts off with trade. Yeah, so you don't have to worry about too much diplomacy. Uh, Rhyme Sport, yeah, that's great. And then, of course, I nearly forgot Old Town as well, which looks absolutely amazing. Look at this. <laughs> it does look awesome. And then you've got the High Tower as well, which looks fantastic. And I love the little uh, High Tower banners it's got hanging off it, which is cool. But anyway, that's the Reach. Let's move on to the Stormlands. So, Thornton, Fellwood, uh, the Mountains of. Yeah, it looks awesome. Uh, they do feel they blend the map the, all the textures and stuff blend so well with the map but just everything about this mod is fantastic and I will do it in my final thoughts later but anyway even full hall fantastic uh haste that cool and obviously storms end with its own custom model now with if you have a boat as another faction you can't land up here you can only land at the port or up here it's to make people not be it's to stop people navally invading the storms end and Griffin's roost and taking it instantly and it does make sense because obviously these rocks and everything is, um, it, it's called Shipbreakers Bay for a reason. <laughs> so Storm's End there and Griffin's Roost on this little uh, mountain top, which I think is cool. And obviously you've got Summer Hall, which is the uh, uh, prince, what's it called? The Summer House of the Targaryens, hence what it's called Summer Hall. <laughs> Grand View up here as well. they got Crow's Nest, which has a like, nice little mountain path bit. Uh, Amberley as well. You can't naval invade this as well. That's kind of cool. I'm going to say naval invade. It's not hard to iron for. It's naval too. Um, but you know what I mean. Uh, di disembarking ships basically. And disembarking troops on land basically. But it's naval invasion really. 
Uh, Greenstone, home to the Estamonts. Uh, Mistwoods, Weeping Town. And Stonehelm as well, that's another cool place. Uh, Grandview, uh, Broadarch, and then moving over to Blackhaven and Pottingfield. And uh, Night Song as well. Alright, let's move into Dawn. So, straight away, you have Wile up there, and Will. I'm not too sure on the pronunciations. Again, me and pronunciation with anything, just just don't worry about it. It just it happens. I, I can't bother to pronounce everything right. It's impossible to get everything right. Yawnwood. Uh, Kingsgrave as well. That's cool. Uh, Skyreach, Blackmont. I love the uh, Yawnwood places. That's cool. Gas and Graves up here as well. And then moving down into Western Dawn, you've got High Hermitage, which is home to the Dark Star in, well, this is before the Dark Star, but um, home to him in the books. Uh, and Starfall as well, which I do like Starfall. It's like a nice little, um, you can defend Starfall as well. Like if you uh, you put a fort on that bridge, the enemy can't cross. And you can pretty much hold up in Starfall or evacuate through the port, which is pretty cool. But yeah, that's very cool to see. Starfall's there. Uh, Sandstone. Hell hot as well it goes as a nice little thing that goes up. There's a garrison missing there, so that's something they probably need to do. Uh, Faith as well. Uh, Salt Shore, God's Grace, the Tor. Uh, moving over to Sand uh, Shandy Stone, which needs a garrison. Lemonwood. I will again is a beta, so expect the odd uh, errors. Lemonwood, Planky Town, uh, Ghost Hill, and Spotswood. And of course, you've got Sunspear on the little uh, finger of dawn, I guess. I mean, it's almost like a hand, isn't it, really? That's the whole. That's why it's called the Arm of Dawn. But uh, that's on spit. Anyway, let's go. Ooh, wait. Have a look at the three cities and we'll wrap this up with my final thoughts. So you've got Bravos up here, which has a full stack. Each of the three cities have full stacks. Now, you can play as the uh, three cities. However, it's not really meant to be. The three cities are not really meant to be played for. But there's, no, there's nothing stopping you going to the game and uh, playing them. And just uh, invading Westeros, invading the Vale was Bravos. But yeah, that's Bravos up there. And it's got its own big fleet as well, which is cool. To show the power and trading power of the three cities. So that's Bravos. It looks very nice. And then moving down to Andalos, which is, isn't really... Andalos isn't really a region. It's just a it's a settlement. No, Andalos, no. Andalos is a region, not a settlement. So that's something they changed, but I'm sure for this, so it's not bothering. Considering they weren't really focusing on, West, or on the Essos, then I can see why they just didn't really bother with that. This side of the map. And then moving down, Pantos is quite massive, obviously lacking a lot of settlements, but I'm sure they'll add them at a later date. But as you can see, Pantos with a full stack and a full fleet as well, along with a decent force outside as well. It's also for uh, players like Tar if you're playing the Targaryen, it also acts as a bit of a you just can't sell over to Pentos and just take it for the Targaryens. Uh, which, if you do take it, it does give you a lot of money. So there's bonuses to risking an invasion of Pentos and and the uh, disadvantages to it as well. Uh, moving down, you have Mir, or Mer, whatever it's called, Merman, <laughs> I have no idea. Mer, <laughs> or Mir, uh, obviously it does have the Slaver's Bay banner. Again, the banners will be changed. The three cities were not the focus of this mod, or the Blackfire Rebellion mod at the moment. So, Admiral Allard, so that's, the, that's Mir. <laughs> Now Mer has disputed lands as well. It's just even though it's called it's a region, not a settlement, but ignore that. I'm sure they've uh, sure that's mainly just because they're not bothering with disputed lands. But anyway, um, I would say Volantis, but Volantis is further this way. And they got Lease as well, which is under the Lease faction or Lysini faction, which is cool. Again, we'll full stack and the full fleet as always. Uh, moving over here to the Lysini, who also own. These stepstones as well, which has you can see Torturous Deep and um, Bloodstone, which is pretty cool. And uh, did I miss a? No, I didn't. It's still just that the Spirit Lands area. And the Blackfires also control Tyrosh, which is pretty cool. And I'm a little bit confused why they hold Tyrosh, but then I remembered that uh, Rohan Blackfire, who is yeah, who is Damon's wife, is a Tyroshi woman. I think um, Rohan's Rohan's father was the Lord of Tyrosh. So it kind of makes sense that the Tyroshi are backing the uh, Blackfires, which I kind of like. And it does mean, in case the, uh, I think it's also in case the Blackfires get beaten in Westeros, they return in the east, and then the admin can just give them the Golden Company and multiple armies, and then the Blackfires can do like a rebellion and uh, do like an invasion from the Stepstones. Which I like that. I think that's pretty cool. 
But anyway, that is pretty much it for the mod. I will now give you uh, my final thoughts. I don't really need much thinking here. But uh, it's just safe to say that this mod is one of the best Game of Thrones mods out there. Uh, obviously, Age of Petty Kings is a very decent mod as well. However, I think this is so much more detailed. And uh, obviously, it's a beta. And for a beta, I think it's fantastic. The amount of work that's gone to it is absolutely amazing. And uh, if I wasn't working on Lucium Total War, I'd probably go um, join this mod team. But uh, unfortunately, I am. Which I'm happy to work on uh, Lucium Total War. It's a fantastic mod as well. But this one, uh, for a Game of Thrones fan like myself, it is amazing. There's just so much detail. There's so much detail into the map. The summon models, the units, um, the custom portraits, the, uh, the portraits and just everything. So much work's gone into it. And uh, rest assured, I will probably play this mod at some point for a campaign series. But um, yeah, it's a fantastic. It's just amazing. Like There's just so much to talk, to talk about and so much to uh, explain, but it's so great. Um, fantastic. <laughs> it's just great. Oh, boy. I'm so excited for uh, more stuff. There are obviously previews on the Discord, the Ice and Fire Discord, of screenshots of more, more of more to come. Uh, I think there is a Dream of Spring coming as well. There's a Clash of Kings scenario coming. And there's so much to come. And be rest assured, I will be covering them for videos at a later date. But, um... Yeah, that's pretty much it. There's, again, there's so much potential for this, this mod. And there's just so much more coming. I cannot wait to experience it all. But, uh, yeah, I think we'll probably wrap this up now. I think we've talked quite long enough, long enough I think. And we've covered as much as I can uh, with this mod. Within the time frame, which has probably gone on longer than half an hour. But there you go. It's a big mod. But, yeah, this I still think this is one of the best Ice and Fire mod, uh, Game of Thrones mods out there. Or just Ice and Fire uh, mods out there. Uh, obviously, it's still a beta, remember. So, there are still things to subject to change. Things will change at some point. I'm sure they will. Uh, in terms of what I think would be good to add, I'm not really sure because I think they might be at the settlement limit. Maybe. <laughs> I think. I'm not entirely sure, actually. I don't think they might be. But they might. I don't know. They might be at the settlement limit, so I can't really suggest too much for settlements. So, But I, I think the settlements are fine. Um, it's just if they expand north and do uh, more up there, then they'd have to change it about. Because uh, obviously you can't go any further than 199 settlements in Medieval 2. And for factions, I think, I doubt they're going to add any more factions. I think this is fine. The factions here are good. Um, the detailed balance enough, in my opinion, and uh, pretty good. And, um, but yeah, I think I think the mods are good. I don't think there's anything I can say that they should add, really. I like the fact that these places are ruins and just, like, uh, like no rev uh, nothing inside, no garrisons. I like that. That's kind of cool. And it, I guess it means you can go over there and colonize it and just uh, rebuild it and stuff, which is cool. But yeah, I think there's, that's pretty much it. There's not really so much I can say for factions in Westeros. Maybe in Essos, of course. But they're, with Essos, they're working on that and changing that as time goes on. But I'm sure everything that you guys will want will happen at some point. But anyway, we will end this episode. It's not this episode, sorry. <laughs> we won't end this video off here. It is a absolutely fantastic mod. And I've said fantastic way too much, but it's just really good. And, um... Yeah, I thank you all very much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure to check out the Ice and Fire team, uh, Ice and Fire Mod DB page in the description, and make sure to check out the Ice and Fire Discord as well. There's so much cool previews in there, and so much more information you can get um, out other than just uh, my video. <laughs> but anyway, I thank you all very much for watching, and farewell.